Welcome to the Ascension Football Show. I'm your host, Kieran Edwards. And today on set, we have the president of the SSFL to talk about football. School football is on the front burner. Um, we've seen it regionally. And we're having some discussions with Marie Gonzalez to find out what's the state of affairs with local schoolboy football. Well, it has been coined a principles league simply because... Tell us a bit about your executive and, and the persons that, that form your executive. Sponsors such as Full Fidelity, Coca-Cola, uh, And schoolboy football is on the front burner. And we have with us the president, Mr. Marie Gonzalez. Pleasure to have you on set, sir. A pleasure to be here, Mr. Edwards, yes, and yes. your esteemed Ascension League organization. No, thanks, thanks. Um, I want to get into it. Um, take us through the process of, of you becoming the, the, the president of the SSFL. Very good question. As a, I've been into the educational system since 1981 after coming out of training college, Vars and Teachers Training College, went to Success RC School, my alma mater, taught for two years there, and from there into secondary school, Mount Hope Secondary School to be precise, since 1988, of which when I retired, I was still a member of the teaching staff there. In 1990, two years after entering the secondary school, I got involved in the secondary school football league since 1990. I've been serving in the East Zone for a number of years in the executive as a floor member first and then moving from there as assistant secretary, then as secretary, then as vice chairman, and then from 2010, I've been the chairman to up to 2021 uh, when I assumed the presidency of the secondary school football league. I have also been serving during that period of time at the national level as a general council representative of the East Zone. I've also served as the zonal executive rep at the national executive uh, position. And I've also been a member of the disciplinary committee as well as the appeals committee. So by and large, and, and even before that, my deep-rooted involvement in football, especially as a FIFA assistant referee, and even more so as a FIFA fitness instructor and FIFA technical instructor, I feel those things in particular, and grounded and rooted also as a physical educator, and also very much involved in sports psychology and sports counseling, I found it necessary that uh, moving up the ladder to the esteemed position of presidency would put me in a better position to be able to serve the student athletes in Trinidad and Tobago. So you've been around the system of the SSFL for some, for quite some time, quite as some time. quite some yeah. time. So uh, it's not it's not a fly by night, and you just happen to become president, and they say, "Marie, let's take up the job." Yeah. Yes, all right. Um, tell us a bit about your executive and, and the persons that, that form your executive. Good. Presently at this time, we have Mr. S.L. Sicharan, who is the chairman actually of the South Zone. He's the first vice president. The second vice president presently is the secretary of Tobago's SSFL Zone, and she is the second vice president that is Cyan uh, Blackman Walsh. The secretary is the stalwart, Mr. Azad Khan. He has been secretary since 1990. Yes, yes. Azar has been. And he has been the fifth secretary and the most uh, long serving secretary thus far. Uh, we also have in attendance, in, in office, I should say, Mr. Lawrence Sipasad, another, another long standing servant and officer of the league. He is the assistant secretary of operation. And Mr. Jared Elliott, who is actually the secretary of the South Zone. He's the Assistant Secretary of Administration. I may also say that Mr. Lawrence Ipasad is also the Secretary of the Central Zone. Okay. okay. And then we have the Auditor, Mr. Kazim Khan. Okay. So those are the persons who are presently 
serving this tenure of office in the SSFL? When, when we, we always hear the, the term, it's a principal's league, and what, what, what is, what's, how, how is that deemed a principal league with, when it comes to the SSFL? Well, it is, has been coined a principal's league simply because of the fact that the point person within the school is the chief figure and head of the school, in this case, the principal, who is expected to be the official representative of the SSFL. In the absence of him because of the overload of work has to be done by him or her, they usually will now designate a responsible and trustworthy person, possibly maybe a parent, a coach, a trainer, a teacher, as the case might be. And it's in light of that, it being the principal being the pointed person, as I said, and the person that is targeted as the official representative of the school, and also that close link we have with the Ministry of Education. It's a coin, coin. the principal's lead. Okay, okay. And, and the structure, all right, so when, when, let's say, school football resumes, how is that structure of, of the SFL, SSFL um, of normally operates? What is the structure of, of, of that? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have quite a very well-structured, constructive, and well-organized and systematic system in place, structure in place. So the five zones, which are the East, North, Central, South, and Tobago, they will have their management committee of which they replicate the national body. And in light of that, they will have the chairman, vice chairman, secretary, assistant secretary of operation and administration, with the two general council rep from the zone and the national, the zonal executive uh, member who is on the national executive. Um, having said that, we are also of the understanding that we have meetings during the season between September to December. Uh, constitutionally, it is held once every month because of so many different issues that will need to be addressed during the season. In the off season, we expect it to be every two months or de when it ever it deems fit. Right. And every year we have the, an the annual general meeting. We also will accommodate extraordinary general meeting in the event that there are any burning issues that need to be addressed. For example, we had two general extraordinary general council meetings uh, a few months ago, uh, to be precise, and uh, we dealt with, for example, the outstanding financial audited report as well as constitutional reform. But but currently, as as you mentioned, the the AGM of, yeah. of you know we, we like to find out a, a lot of football organizations are in debt and 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 have problems financially. What what is the, the financial standing of the, the the secondary school football league at this current? Well, moment? well, I would say it is it it is quite uh, satisfactorily, reasonably, and respectably we are comfortable where we are. Certainly, we can do better. Yeah. All right, there's always room for improvement. It wasn't like that many years ago. As a matter of fact, there was a point in time the SSFL had no sponsors, but during the period of time the marketing strategies that we put in place and also creating the hype around the youths, in this case the student athletes, uh, sponsors such as First Citizen, Coca-Cola, uh, Sportsmax Digital, or even Malta uh, at, uh, at a point in time would have been on board as some of them still are on board uh, given the support. Uh, at this point in time we we are reasonably, as I said, financially viable. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic impact on the world and Trinidad and Tobago, and more so the sporting industry and the SSFL, uh, one yeah. of the sponsors is unable to continue. Uh, we are still, at this point in time, under discussion with one or two other prospective sponsors who are desirous of coming on board and we are working with them because in moving forward as long as sponsors and I, I would like to maybe 
change the term sponsor mm -hmm. to refer to partners. Because when you have a financial entity or institution that aligns itself with your policy and your philosophy, as in the SSFL, we have partners that work along with us because they buy into the product and they support our cause. So in light of that, at this point in time, we are reasonably comfortable, but we are working towards ensuring that we bring more because, partners on board. Because that's what I wanted to get to. I wanted to, to ask, but in light of the, the, the pandemic, um, companies and, and sponsors, as you say, partners, yeah. um, financial issues would arise. Okay. Um, right. How is it the, the, the SSFL is looking in terms of looking at very different sponsors mm -hmm. because we'd have the the the, the, the cells and the the, the motor carib and and the, the, the traditional sponsors yes. um the banks that normally mm -hmm. lend themselves to, to sports yes. but there are other sponsors now or, or other companies that may have strived in the pandemic um not normally being a sponsor to sporting organizations how are you looking at maybe Mm -hmm. changing your focus in terms of who you who you you reach out to in terms of sponsorship well we have lost two of the sponsors and that is because maybe of the economy mm -hmm. economic issues and that is shell as well as malta and we do thank them sincerely for the contribution that they would have made to advance and to promote youth football in Trinidad and tobago re the ssfl certainly mm -hmm. with other persons and other financial bodies that we are looking at even what i say the ascension league is one of them that we have wrong the table uh being discussed and i think maybe it's just a matter of time before we table um, and send uh, official correspondence to the league and see how we can maybe work together uh in addition to one or two other partners that we're looking to work with to ensure that we have a even greater solid foundation so collectively and in good col collaboration we can harmoniously work together to advance and promote football in trinidad and tobago as we say promote football i, I, I want to take a quick break and when i get back we want to talk about the resumption of of some sort of school boy football or, yeah. or competition so sure. <laughs> when we come back from break we talk a little more about what is the future for school football in trinidad and tobago pest control is a pain but you don't have to go it alone. If you're a business that needs someone who will fix your problems point blank, go with the brand that's tested. Go with Terminix. Born almost a century ago in Memphis, Tennessee, Terminix International's mission has been to spread its innovations across the world through its integrated pest and termite management system, reducing the infestation of pests and vermin. Our Trinidad franchise neutralizes the threat of tropical insects and ensures that companies, from food production to hospitality, protect their investment and get the maximum value from our relationship. And we've been doing it well for over 20 years. Termites and pests are relentless, but they're no match for Terminix. Contact us today for a free consultation and quote, and let's introduce you to convenience. Protect your premises today. Choose a service provider that persists. Talk to Terminix. Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. Quality for champions. Yeah. Ascension! Ascension! Premium quality and style make you stand out all the time. Ascension is quality for champions. Ascension fit is always right. Take your game to higher heights. Ascension got the quality for champions. So everybody say, hey, oh. we wearing Ascension when we play. Champions. 
Castle Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. At our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Fishing with the boys. Or a fun DDI experience with friends. Repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1 866 634 1653. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. with brew and we're back uh, Mary, um jamaica is having schoolboy football i want to get into it straight yeah. off everybody's saying this is on the street the word on the street as you know ascension is, is close to the ground yeah. and, and how we operate the word on the street is jamaica is having schoolboy football and trinidad is not having a league for 2021 um jamaica three million persons trinidad 1.4 we have in Trinidad more persons vaccinated than persons in Jamaica. We have less cases than persons in Jamaica. Jamaica is roughly over 90,000 cases. Mm -hmm. um, we are at about six, 60,000 cases. Yes. Um, more persons vaccinated, as I, I would have mentioned. Yes. But they are having their league, their school league running, and um, we are not having our 2021 season. What? What is Jamaica doing better than us in terms of having that football being played with amongst their, their school population? First and foremost, Mr. Edwards, I want to extend heartfelt congratulations to the move that Ascension League made towards pursuing uh, the commencement of the Ascension League, which, as we all know, regretfully was not considered at this time, but still, we won't be daunted by it still work towards it because it's just a matter of time. And I think other entities like the SSFL and other football organizations has to take a page out of your book. 
Now, in reference to the secondary school football league, which is ISSA in Jamaica, we had a meeting quite recently, as a, as a matter of fact, last Monday, with Sportsmas Digital, of which Mr. Nicholas Matthews is the CEO. And we did commend him tremendously and highly of uh, the fact that they were able to commence not only the secondary school football league season, but the National League. Yeah. yeah. All right? They had, when we had meetings with them earlier on, they had intimated to us by advice that we could possibly look at Manny Manjan Stadium, Hazley Crawford Stadium, and Atto Boland Stadium as the three entities rather than spread it too yeah. far so you could manage. We had that along with our health and safety protocols. Everything, I guess, just like Ascension League, went to the relevant authorities and uh, there was a level of reservation at that point in time. It, it reopened with some expectation for us to have something tangible in September of 2021, uh, if not a truncated season to start in October. But then the vaccination issue within the school population became yeah. a daunting and challenging task. And it really put a spoke in our wheel, not to say that we wouldn't continue, but it, we were looking forward to have a physical uh, season with the schools. Having looked closely at what Jamaica has done and the support and confidence of the government working along with the sporting industry and more so the, the ISSA to have it done, what, we, what, what was established there is that they have now isolated one venue. And that one venue, they're going to have all managerial and uh, the system, systems put in place to control the protocols and to adhere also to the health and safety protocols there. So in light of that, we are elated by the fact that they were able to start so that the youths of Jamaica will be in a better position while they, as a population, understand they still have to be disciplined to respect the dreaded COVID-19, yeah. like we in Trinidad and Tobago has to also understand, we need to respond to that. Because of making that move, Heron, what is Jamaica spearheading that showing is that those youths will have a slight advantage, or even a greater advantage, re-CFU and CONCACAF youth tournaments, and also, as they are now, involved in the World Cup qualifying, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, tournament, which we see them giving their very best, and we, as a Caribbean country, and a, we want to wish them all the best. So, they were able to do that because of the mindset and the belief among themselves that they can achieve this as long as the significant and relevant parties respond in a disciplined way to ensure that they execute this activity in a very successful way. You mentioned the, 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 the Caribbean football in terms of a setback for our youth teams. Yeah. Um, we, we, we are behind Jamaica for some time in terms of, of senior football. Um, you, you just watch how Jamaica is competing in, in the World Cup qualifiers and you, you watch our team limping to tr or trying to qualify for that, for that rung of eight. Yeah. Um, and you see that we are behind. There, there's no, no, no problem with that. We, 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 have, we fessed up to that. Yes. When it comes to restarting a, a youth league and restarting a secondary school league, you're talking about missing two years of football. Yes. You're talking a guy in Form 3 mm -hmm. is now required, at, at, at the start of the pandemic, is now in Form 5 yes. and is required to play senior football, never playing any second 11, as we call it, or championship football. And would the product of the secondary school football drop because of this lull in of almost two years of inactivity? Just like the secondary school football league, and it's quite a good question, just like the secondary school football will be affected, as a matter of fact, all other football entities in Trinidad and Tobago will be affected too. To what degree they are affected is based on what they may place, put in place to try and buffer 
the degree of how they will be affected. And that is why, as a responsible and respectable and professional organization, which is the SSFL, we are making a concerted effort to ensure that we, at least, if not in the, in the vacuum that has been created now because of the pandemic, that we can still keep the student at least engaged in activities that are positive, uplifting, beneficial, meaningful, and encouraging to them. We would like definitely, Kieran, to get back on the field of play. Uh, we recognize the positive cases have not dropped. Also, the death rates are about the same level. So it has given us a signal and a message that we need to be very mindful of that and to be very careful. What we are also wary of is that with the football as it is, we already found our we already found ourselves or find ourselves, I should say, in a very precarious position, which is we are now scraping the bottom of the barrel within the Caribbean as far as position. I mean, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. it's difficult for us now to beat some of the countries that would have easily yeah, defeated yeah, yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. the Guyana, the Grenada, the Cayman Islands, etc., etc. As you quite rightly said, we literally had to dig deep with some of the quality players that we have to, to get into the Gold Cup. Yeah. And, I mean, congratulations to Angus and his technical staff and the players for really representing us well with all the challenges that we have. Now, what is important is that that exercise would have been a uh, rippling effect and create an inspiration for the younger divisions. Yeah. But what has to happen is that the governing body, which is the TTFE, which we continuously want to work harmoniously and in collaboration with, has to ensure that the policy, the philosophy, the structure, the system is consistently there and adhered to so that we have no break in the continuity, so that there's a smooth transition of players from the under 13 to the under 15 to the under 17, the under 20, and, and you could go on until they reach the senior level. But do but you think the SSFL has a, a, a role to play in, in, in terms of that continuity you talk about from under 13 to 15? To, because we normally see S school football operating in a vacuum more or less mm -hmm. when it comes to yes maybe on the 17 they pick some players from yeah. playing schoolboy football but when it comes to the younger levels they don't really seek the school the school leagues because that's where all your, your young players are playing mm -hmm. have you been engaged with the with the ttfa just for uh, being president in terms of figuring out a way to work closely or together with the TTFA in terms of selecting national youth teams because there are what three youth tournaments that we didn't attend yeah. recently. So what that situation, how do you see that working? That that relationship between secondary school football and then the, the, the TTFA with their youth structure? Well what 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 the present scenario is and has been over the years is that with even with previous executive of the SFL, we have always extended ourselves to the governing body to see how best we can incorporate what we are doing at the SSFL level so that the national level can benefit from yeah. what we are doing. Now, primarily, the SSFL is not fundamentally 100% a developmental league. Yeah. We are partially developmental, but also competitive. Now, because of the constraints that we find ourselves being under the MOE, which is the Ministry of Education, we are guided by the policies and the act of the Ministry of Education. So therefore, all sporting disciplines, inclusive of football, on the 12-month calendar, must be given or should be given a space by which to have their event. We are fortunate enough uh, to have September to December. And because of the nature of the game of football, it's the most popular game okay. in Trinidad and Tobago and in the world. And we are very happy to be part of it with all due respect to the many other sporting disciplines that are also making their significant contributions. That being said, as I had indicated earlier, if there is something that is documented systematically, for example, let me share this part with you. Mr. Alfred, who is now the president of the Tobago yeah, TFA. Football Association. Yeah. 
when he was elected recently, which I congratulated him on, all right, um, he called me and we spoke, and he was concerned in having the woman, which is most likely the young girls who are involved in the women's league yeah. in Tobago. How can we now work? so that there will be no clash yeah. of the leagues where the same set of girls who are in the secondary school playing will not wouldn't have to choose them between either that or the, yeah, or yeah. the, uh, yeah. the league. Our system is in order to prevent, to avoid, to protect the players in the SSFL, we, we have a ruling in the constitution that states that you cannot be playing in another league while you're part of the yeah. SSFL. And that is primarily because of one main factor. And I, I'm sure you will attest and agree with what I'm going to say now. There's an insurance that we have on all the players. And therefore, in the event of any injury, the SSFL takes responsibility based on the nature of the injury to subsidize yeah. that player uh, for, to full recovery. Yeah, yeah. So if he or she now wants to take part in another yeah, yeah. Uh, tournament and get injured there, it is not fear to us no. now to stand that uh, injury that the person may have incurred. And therefore, in light of that, returning to where we are now is how can the SSFL navigate, maneuver, work together with the, uh, the continuously with the FA to ensure that we have some level of continuity. Why? Because at this present moment and even before that, the level of football that is played at the SSFL level does not equate to the level that is expected or the standard at the CFU or CONCACAF. Mm -hmm. So what is supposed to happen is that the work that being done by the SSFL is now incorporated into the TTFA, where they will have their elite program mm -hmm. And therefore, with that elite program, now they lift even the level of football of the school yeah, boys yeah. or girls, mm -hmm. and they will now reach to the standard of the CFU or CONCACAF. Now, as it is right now, regrettably to say, and that is why John and Jane, public or the, in the public there, they have a concern why it is these guys are not stepping up to the competition at that level. It is unfair to actually take a, a young man who is operating or girl at playing at the same level of the school here, just I guess maybe in Jamaica and maybe Grenada and Guyana, etc., etc., and then put them into a competition, let's say in uh, no in CONCACAF, right? Where these youth teams are exposed with having maybe sometimes 20, 30, 40 friendly games yeah, yeah, before yeah, a yeah, tournament. Yeah. When you're now taking one or two or three or four uh, school boys or girls and they're putting them into a system and expect them to perform because he, because i would have looked at the u.s youth soccer mm -hmm. system because they have a whole system for the youth yeah where they have their collegiate football right is played and they have a specific time for that That's and then outside of that then the national teams will take take yeah. take set up and and their regional teams will take set up and their elite programs would, would come on board so when when you see a, a USA youth team come out, yeah. it's the amount of playing time they would have is, is year round because they have right. the school playing time and then they have their own tournaments mm -hmm. set up. How far along are we from having a system like that, you believe? Well, we have successfully done it. But I think one of the main factors, Karen, that we have that is a real drawback to us in Trinidad and Tobago is the lack of consistency because we have had within the very same pro league a youth pro league yeah. that really accommodated and facilitated for that type yeah. of development yeah. so therefore not during the ssfl season the pro league youth pro league took part earlier on in the year yeah. so yeah. these very same players and by and large we need to be also mindful about the recovery the physiological recovery of the player mm -hmm. he or she cannot survive for 12 years yeah. playing they need it when we look at the periodization you need to have that area of rest yeah. and recovery so that has to be uh, we do as much as we can within the ssfl to educate the players about that 
but with the respective clubs too, that they could also enhance yeah. that. So if there is a continuation of the programs collectively within the 12 year calendar inclusive of the re recovery or rest period, then I am, I am sure if we continue along that line, we will do well. But what happened within the last, what, five to eight years? There was an absence of youth football and therefore SSFL now no, being a continuous uplifting league in the country was seen arbitrarily and inadvertently having to fill the void for youth football when uh, that was really a bit yeah, unfair yeah, 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 to us yeah. because the national, the FA was supposed to have this system in place and all SSFL will do is complement and, and, and lend to that, yes. lend to that structure. Yeah. Yes, but, but the players are there. It's just now we, the administrators, have to ensure that we put the structure in place and give them the program and the training to, to the, follow. To and see. we return to where we rightfully deserve to be, up in the where the air is rare and <laughs> into the top three in Concord. I, I truly yes. believe that. I truly believe that. Let's talk the skills tournaments. The skills tournaments. How... How, how did that come about and, and, and what it is, what it yeah. really is? Well, one of my points in my campaign moving into presidency was to have online pro programs in light of the fact, which was earlier on this year, mm -hmm. April 15 to be exact, that because of the COVID-19 and the uncertainty as to know when it may come to an end we have to now pl have plan b and plan c etc so i had indicated to the executive from the onset and even before that i had it in my manifesto that we need uh, I, we need to push to have online activities and one of them will be basically to facilitate to accommodate to engage to involve the student athletes in online activities which they will still be doing some of the very same skills that they will do in a football match they will do it separately and individual and apart from now in the program and in the approach we would have had things like uh, dribbling the ball passing the ball kicking the ball goalkeeping etc right though that, that's the initial intention However, when we look at it in the time frame between now and the end of this year, we felt it necessary just to tweak it a bit and to have an online, the inaugural, historic, first online ball skills, ball juggling uh, challenge showdown. So we were looking at the age groups and we decided rather than go with all the age groups that we have, which is Form 1, 13 and under, 14 and under boys, 16 and under boys, etc. 15 and under girls, senior week. So I listen, it may be, we may be a bit biting off more than we can chew in inverted commas. So we decide to keep it into two age group categories, boys and girls, as a pilot project. See how this one, which we most likely is anticipating, will be a real, uh, with great expectation, anticipation with bated breath that the students uh, will be responding to it in a positive way. So we're going with it with the ball juggling. We have done two demo of it, uh, which is uh, by our present two female uh, senior Soka Warriors, okay. uh, in the person of Mayli Atten Johnson, renowned midfielder, and the present captain of the uh, Karen Forbes okay. uh, from Tobago, who, as you know, has a ticket with Karen mm -hmm. uh, event, and also she has now release the first book of Woman book. of Substance yes, yes, yes. and she'll be launching it um, around the 10th to the 11th we, we, we are hoping to have her yeah. on, on set when she launches her book as well so that would be great and, and so, so in light of that we decided to go that way um, some of the basic rules in it are for example that you will wear the football uniform of the school okay. simply because we want you to still associate yeah, and yeah, identify yeah. yourself with the school Forms are sent to the schools through the principals. Yeah. So, right. so you're registered. You're, you're registering through the schools as That's normal. Correct. Okay. So you get you get the forms from the principals. You register because the principal will have to sign and put the school stamp okay. on it. Officially, you put your as the player, student, athlete. You put your passport ID. 
and you indicate the age group that you're doing and as I said before those who are 16 and under 45 seconds to do your demo um, 60 se um, 90 seconds you if you are over 16 uh, that being said some of the other guidelines that they need to adhere to are must be a size 5 ball you must show to the camera size 5 you yeah. must bounce the ball on the surface mm. so we'll see how much pressure it has yeah. because certainly as you know a softer mm. ball is easier yeah, yes, 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 <laughs> right? yes. not that we are in any way speculating yeah yeah but yeah, 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 but, but this is all part of the criteria mm. also too for them to respond to the fact that uh, they can do it with the creativity the originality the uh, videography which means with or without music okay. the aesthetic the body parts that you're using mm. to execute the skill the smooth transition of the ball from one body part to another body part um, if the ball touches the ground and it is part of your act the mm -hmm. judges will deal with it accordingly right. they will know fully well yeah, it yeah. Is. yeah it right? means, uh, so it, it's it's uh, guidelines and rules and regulation like that that we have drawn up and we have forwarded out now to all registered schools and even those schools that may not have played in the last season of 2021 but may be interested uh they're entitled to and they're they're so interested they do it the registration will be for the next two weeks okay and the submitting now of the video clip will be from since the launch on thursday right. to the 17th friday the okay. 17th of december okay so you still have time to, to collect your, your, your package, That's get get registered and still and be still. able to create a, a, a Now, interestingly video. enough, to, in addition to what you're observing there, is that there's a special award we would like to provide, which is the school that has the most amount of participants. The entries, yeah. We're waiting for us to see how the registration is, the response to the registration. Yeah. To know if necessary to go in that direction okay. because that is one of the things that we were concerned about if we left it for all the various age groups the load of videos that we may have yeah, coming yeah, here which yeah. we'll have on our Facebook page mm -hmm. and also on the website and we hope we'll maybe working along with Ascension League if we can uh, get it one or two of it being shown here too uh, because Sports Maps as a matter of fact Digicel has told us categorically clear keep them updated, keep mm. them informed. They would like to follow the competition and they will, they will use all their social media platform to showcase it on behalf of the... Of the well, I, I, want to, I want to give you that assurance as well. Anything needed, any assistance needed yeah. on the Ascension side in terms of airing and, yeah. and promoting we'll the tournament, very, we, we very, would assist I'm as sure well. I'm sure the executive will be very heartened and Happy yeah, to hear yeah, such. We would assist. Yeah. When you when you come with you mentioned the the, the maybe a prize for the, the school yeah. that has the most entries. Yes. What are some of the prizes or, or you're still working all that or do you have prizes for the winners and stuff? Well usually our prizes at the end of the year function for any season would be basically trophies, yeah. medals, and you would have depending on the sponsor or the partner that we are like first citizen, we'll have it, for example, maybe um the account the taking accounts, out yeah. a certain yeah. amount to start off mm -hmm. the account. So certain things like that, or with it maybe for the sponsors like Coca-Cola, in addition to cash, they may provide products yeah, that go towards and, the school, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. And it's along that line we primarily be looking at it, but it does not mean that we will in any way curtail or ignore other prices that could work to further enhance. The, the image and the status of the I, I I would have played in the secondary school football league and, and I still have more medals from under fourteen okay. and but <laughs> it's it's that is Lovely. that is is, yeah. is a prize in its own. I don't yeah. think it have a course they could put on, on a on a prize from your secondary school football. Yeah. Um so so I, I understand that uh, you you have mentioned the, the partnership with the TTFA mm -hmm. and the secondary schools football league. Mm -hmm. Um being a, a, a stakeholder being a delegate to the general meeting of the the, the ttfa mm -hmm. um everything is, has been going on in the media yeah. and we've seen everything going on in media what's your take on on the normalization committee engaging the courts with the bankruptcy and insolvency act um in terms of liquidating the debt of the ttfa value that what 98 million um from Ernest and young 
What's your thoughts on, on that process currently? Exceptionally good question there, Karen. And even before that, in answering that question, uh, we have been having issues with the state of football in Trinidad and Tobago with accountability and financial accountability, et cetera. Uh, to reach that humongous figure of mm. 90 plus or almost 100 million, it is really a, totally a, a gigantic and exceptionally challenging uh, issue and task to deal with. The normalization committee, as we all are aware, have been mandated by FIFA uh, for any country, and in this case, Trent and Tobago, who may be having problems beyond their control, to come and as the, 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 the words say, normalize, mm -hmm. right? It's supposed to normalize yeah, the situation. Yeah, yeah. They have been given a two-year mandate to do such, and uh, we're getting very close to the the end of the two years, I would have thought uh, as the president of the SSFL, and I would assume most likely, not assume, but from discussion with the membership, that um, we, we would have been more advanced with the three mandates that were given to the normalization committee. And one of the major things, as you just mentioned now, is the bankruptcy and the insolvency. Oh, those are two dreaded words, mm -hmm. eh? mm -hmm. right? Um, because as long as we, we go down that route, uh, although we understand the reason and reasons why as to that approach being taken to avoid maybe the heavy hand from the creditors uh, who are all around looking for their pong of flesh yeah. and rightfully deserving of it because they, they provided the yeah. service. Uh, one would have thought that some other more innovate, innovative approach and creative approach, rather than going to the point of being bankrupt and insolvent, could possibly still be considered as a means of addressing this situation. Um, has all options been exhausted? Is the question we had to ask ourselves. Now, for that to happen, it means that the information must be communicated crystal clear to all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And as we have recognized, the communication was an issue, and apparently it still remains an issue. Uh, that, like any entity, if you want to build the trust in membership and with the stakeholders, communication is important, and not only communication, but the information that is being imparted in being imparted must be, must be of the level of credibility. Now, I'm not in any way casting any aspersion, yeah. but so I'm saying is that the process right now has to be beefed up where uh, the membership has to be given what the reality of the situation is. The membership of which the SSFL is one of, what one of the stakeholders need to be consulted because we have views and somewhere along the line, we are part of the solution. You know, this is all part of Trinidad and Tobago trying to create the best mix so that we can return to where we rightfully deserve our position in football in the Caribbean and in CONCACAF. I suspect most likely with that approach that there will be an extension of the normalization committee. If that be in the case, we hope and pray and trust, trust, hope and pray, trust, hope and pray that we will have something that is remedial, corrective, that can rectify the situation in a not too distant future. Because the longer we stay to deal with the matter, is the longer the youths of the nation who are so interested in the game of football and has remained a critically important dimension with helping the society to keep them on a positive yeah. lane away from the negative and criminal elements that we have a responsibility to provide that platform in order to create that uplifting, that encouraging, positive, productive, meaningful mindset in the hearts and souls of our young ones because this we are doing 
as uh, and no matter what whether we do it now whether we did it in the past now or next 5 10 15 years it should always be in the back of our minds the future what are we doing for the future of the nation which is the youths and that is why primarily i will focus a lot on using the term student athletes rather than athlete students because first you are a student mm -hmm. in the school as part of your education you have sports for which they engage in football is one of them mm -hmm. so that is why we term you as student mm -hmm. athlete pushing you supporting you encouraging you to go after your dreams your goals and your aspirations Be before we go before we go to the last free hot seat yeah i want to ask you a question in in, in your belief um two questions actually one you mentioned that the normalization committee might, in your belief, may have an extension in terms of possibility yes. of that. If that extension is given, do you believe Mr. Haddad should remain at the helm of the normalization committee? And the second question is, in a scale from one to ten, ten being the highest, one being the lowest, what what rating do you give the normalization committee in terms of communications? communication to, with the public, the stakeholders, the, I think they are the two most important persons they should communicate with. And, and then we don't know what the communication with FIFA, yes. but in terms of locally in Trinidad here, in terms of the public and, and, and the stakeholders, the, the delegates to the general meeting, what rating do you give them in terms of communication? Well, looking at the level? first part of the question, first question is that there's a reason why I would have intimated that there's a possibility of an extension that may be requested because the work that was supposed to have been done within the two-year period uh, are very far away from achieving that. And I mean, only it's only realistic that if the work has not been accomplished, that an extension be requested. It's only fair or natural flow of things that that will happen. So it's in light of that that I say a possibility exists that a question will be uh, made for it. Now, I would want to also believe that having been given the mandate, Mr. Haddad and his uh, colleagues uh, came with possibly good intentions to deal with the matter. It may be, it may be, based on what they have now presently experienced, uh, it maybe needs a lot more collective assistance in solving and dealing with it. And that is why maybe they have inverted commas now looking at bankruptcy and as insolvency as a way of handling part of it. So I would like to still give them the opportunity, not, not necessarily being replaced, replacing anyone, but still give them an opportunity and if they the extension to prove their work yeah. right because okay you have put up your hand and you have accepted the yeah. responsibility so you have maybe encountered some difficulty along the way hey it is not so much in the starting but it is in the finishing of it it is in the resilience the perseverance uh sticking to it adhering to what is supposed to be done and doing it don't surrender mm -hmm. under pressure so whether it be them or someone else, preferably them because they are, they are already yeah. there and they know what it's like, get the job Stop done. Down. Because it can be done. Yeah. It yeah. can be done. Get the job done. So on a scale of 0 to 10, as far as, well, their performance and communication, I would give them a, possibly a 5. A 5. A 5, yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, let's take a, let's take a break. Sure. I hope you're, you're ready for the Lasso Free Hot Seat. <laughs> um, when we come back, we put Mr. Gonzalez on the Lasso Free Hot Seat. The situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches. Right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladenstone come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview me. But how could you defend one shot, one kill? 
What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Get in the game with Ascension. What for champions? Hey, Ascension! Magnificent Mall, number 271, Southern Main Road, Macbean, Cuba. Amanze Del Cafe. Happiness begins with brew. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. At our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. Fun DDI experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1 868 
634-1653. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited. The best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. And we're back. Mr. Gonzalez, we're putting you on the Lasso Frame Arena yeah. hot seat. Yes. Want your all time best trainer at 11. Not no, I don't want no bench, man. Don't tell me that they just substitute. I ain't picking me because I pay them on my bench. I, I don't want nobody on the bench. Right. Also, because being a FIFA referee, yes. I want your best trainer to be good. Okay, FIFA I'll, referee. I'll come to that one just now. <laughs> so let's start now at the starting 11. Mm -hmm. Earl Spider Man. Carter, goal. goalkeeper. God bless his soul, the deceased Russell Teixeira. Selvis Figaro. Clayton Morris. Brian Williams, the defenders. Right. Midfielders. Russell Atapi. So, no, so no, no Soka Warriors defenders, no, no Marvin Andrews, no, no, no Dennis Lawrence, no. No, none of those players make it. I realize you're going straight to school with me with your T-shirt, and you stop up by the strike squad. You stop. <laughs> you stop. You, you bought it a little earlier, but you're you, 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 a little chance to right, make right. feelers and strikers. All right, well, let me have a feel. Right. Let me have a so feel. Russell Atapi, right? Mm -hmm. Russell Atapi, Arnold Dorica, mm -hmm. and who could be the next person, boy? Uh, Okay, I'll come back to them. That's two. That's like two. Four. Are you play, what first time played? I played a 4 3 3 or you played a, 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 a 4 3 right 4 2 I had to be at a 4 2 4 boy. Yeah, yeah, 4 yeah. 2 4. So, strike, four strikers now, right? Right, yeah. Good. Um, Dwight York. Mm -hmm. I had to bring in Steve David here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or oh, the other midfielder is Gary, Gary Cummins. Okay. Right? Um, yeah, three, four. Stone John. Stone John. Right? One more player, boy. No, I hey. know one more. That is your mm. team. You are training your midfield. I got them already there? Yeah, you are training your midfield. You are training your midfield. So plus, <laughs> right? <laughs> you try to pick up a bench for one for one. Who is the player that, that you're playing on the bench? You're playing bench. 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 You're playing And then you're Dwight. Dwight who, York, who, yeah. Who's the next one that you would have wanted to put in there? Um, You mean uh, as a striker? As a striker. Uh, it's because okay. Leon it's okay. Soon and they, they, they would have who? Leon Soon and you have you have Leon Soon is, is, is one of them too, you know. That's you have, you have some seriously considered. So none as, of the new school. As a left footer. So none of the new school. You no mean presently playing present now? Play, play now? The Molinos, the Joven Jones. How, how do you look on the the new generation of players? But the, it's not a takeaway from the new generation, eh? But um and I give them all full right. support along the way. It's just that well, I guess I am not fully 100% uh, confident as I am confident yeah, in yeah. the names that I just yeah, called. Yeah. Uh, maybe they have to do a little more to prove yeah. to me that they deserve to be in that I, I, 11. I, I think the, yes. the, the newer players too need to understand the shoulders the, that the they history, stand on. The yes. and, and, and understand we need to step up to replace mm -hmm. some of these guys in terms of our legacies and... Yeah. And what not. And, and what is important too is this. I mean, you mentioned the Joven Jones and the Molino. And I respect that. But what I am more, more, more important to, to me is consistency and performance. Like the West Indies team, with all due respect. <laughs> right? You can give you a good game today and tomorrow they could bleed your heart. Yeah. Right? So it has to be consistently performing. Right? And the names that I have called... In my book, in my mind, my heart and soul, yeah, yeah. they have been consistent they call performance. Them out and you put them on the field. That's and, correct. And they they, they yes. would perform yeah. every, every, mm -hmm. every outing. Yeah. Give me the referee. Give me a, your top referee. I know this one got higher. Now, you, you say referee, but you're talking about the person in the middle, or is it a match official? Match official, referee, linesman, no, well, if you official. If you say match official, the best I call it myself. No, you you're really you can't, you can't, 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 can't call yourself. You can't call it. You can't get away. You can't get away with that. <laughs> give me one. Give me one from the I rest. call it myself because yeah. I mean I've been to Premier World Cup yeah. as an official as a, as an instructor. Also, so outside of myself, yeah. Um, the one that comes to the forefront, all right. Maybe not to many major tournaments. But before, because of the popularity 
And also could have uh, also did quite a good job as a referee too would be Ramesh Ramdan, mm -hmm. who I work with as a match official in the World Cup in, in France in 1998. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so to, if, if we're talking about the most experienced, maybe one of the most qualified, competent referees we have in the country, all right, would be Ramesh Ramdan. Okay. Um, outside of it, if you have a, take an assistant referee, then it will be maybe most likely our first uh, assistant referee. As a matter of fact, at that time, they used to call them linesmen. He, he was the first, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but the first in the Caribbean. Former teacher from Malik Secondary, he lives in Belmont. Uh, oh, his name just slipping me there. Douglas James. Okay. Yes, Mr. Douglas James. He is the first person from Trinidad and Tobago to represent the Caribbean at a World Cup was the 1994 World Cup in the USA. In USA. Yes. Okay. When he made a very crucial decision that the world thought that was a mistake, only to know when they look at the review, he had made an excellent okay. offside decision, okay. which allowed him to stay on to the rest of the tournament. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Gonzalez, great pleasure to have you on, on set. I think it's a pleasure every time you, are, you, you, you visit the Ascension Football Show. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to come back again when you, when the tournament starts yes. in terms of giving us some updates. Information. Letting us, yeah, letting us know what's happening with it. Okay. Um, but it was a pleasure having you on set. Certainly a pleasure being here, Mr. Edwards, and I look forward for further and more harmonious and enlightening collaboration with Ascension League. Thank you so we, kindly. We, we and the very here. best to your company once yes, again. Yes, we are here to help, so it's no problem. Appreciate that a lot. And that's it for another Ascension show. Remember to join us on our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And watch us at our website at www.theascensionfootballshow.com.